Hey guys, this is GKCS. Today we have a very special guest with us. That is Yogita Sharma. Yogita is a software engineer at Kareem and also has a, an awesome system design channel on YouTube. So if you haven't seen it, do check it out. It's in the link it's called Pseudo Code and it's got an entire series on system design simplified. Yogita has very graciously joined us today to take a mock interview on system design. So Yogita, are you excited? Yes, I'm very nervous uh, for the system design interview uh, because this is a live mock system design interview. And in this interview, we are going to see how real life system design interviews happen and how do engineers solve the real life system design interview questions. Chala, so Yogita, this is the question. Huh? You okay. need to design a system similar to TikTok or similar to Instagram Reels. Basically, you have short videos which are being posted by people all around the world uh, on their newsfeed. Uh, the important thing is, how are you going to take these videos? A. How are you going to store them? That is B. And how are you going to distribute them? That is C. Because this is a 45 minute interview. I'm taking it like a pretty advanced thing. So, uh, I would say that these are some of the functional requirements that we have and I will just keep them here uh, for us to refer and what are you looking at for the non-functional requirements of the system like are you looking at high availability or low latency? So usually yeah I mean we don't uh, consistency is useful but it's not something that we care about too much if there is a delay in a video being shown in one country it's okay the other thing is that we do want our system to be fault tolerant. It shouldn't be like if India has an issue in one of its servers, then we don't get to see any videos. It should okay. be like an entire data center has to go down before we start getting worried. But even then, ideally, I mean, it should not, it should not stop our business. Right. Okay. And obviously, I think you would want the system to be uh, available as well because you said it should be fault tolerant like people should be able to see the videos like the service should not be down yeah consistency like i said is not a key thing here availability is very important you need fault tolerance and you need another thing which is performance in the sense that when a person uploads a video they don't want to wait for a very long time before it actually gets published that is number one and number two would be like okay fine as soon as you can send it to users we should send it Okay, okay. So I would say there, there should be low latency uh, between uh, upload yeah, yeah. and uh, availability to the user, upload and user visibility, right? Mm -hmm. And also there should be low latency when the video is being streamed or like people are watching it. Yes. yes. So uh, like even this video, I'm sure uh, guys, you're watching this on YouTube. It may not be that the moment we posted on YouTube, you got a notification. So just like that, Yogita, I don't mind if the notification reaches them even half an hour late. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe you are doing it in the background, but a notification, um, I, I mean, the it should be fast. When I'm uploading things on YouTube, I, I, I just want my video to be uploaded and I want to feel like, okay, when I press the publish button, I, my job is done. Now viewers will keep coming. Uh, yeah, yeah, got it. So basically upload should be low latency. Uh, the difference between upload and user visibility can be few minutes. Yes. If I understand that right. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many users are we looking at? Approximately, if we are talking about Instagram. Yeah, like, I mean, like a ballpark figure for daily active users. Daily active users might be uh, 10 million. 10 million. So these, these are 10 million users we have to serve. So these 10 million users are actually uh, viewers. I will call them viewers. Is that okay? Yeah, you can call them uh, 10 million will be like, uh, so 1 billion is my assumption of number of people who are downloading Instagram, which is a huge number. I don't think that is accurate, uh, but let's go ahead with that assumption. Let's say that one in 100 people actually watch Instagram every day. So that will be 10 million. Uh, and yeah, maybe you can say that most of the users uh, don't watch Instagram much while some users 
go through Instagram a lot. So maybe you have like 10% of the users, which is 1 million users who are active very often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So uh, uh, let's say that we have 10 million viewers and what would you say would be the ratio of creators, like people who are uploading videos versus people who are uh, consuming the videos. It's it. I mean, we are using these apps on daily basis. So we know that up the ratio of uh, creators is low in comparison to consumers. But still, like uh, if 10 million viewers are daily active users are the consumers, what would you say is the ratio of creators? Like, do you want it to be 1 is to 10 uh, or even like 1 is to 100? Lesser. Maybe every video gets at least, um, yeah, maybe the number of creators is just uh, 1 lakh, which is uh, 100,000. Yes. So let's say 100k. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now I want to uh, like uh, note down certain, uh, like these are our requirements. Now I want to uh, get to them one by one. But before that, I would like to uh, write some conclusions. Okay. Uh, so we have a, like the right to read ratio is uh, 100k divided by. 10 million, which is 10, it is roughly coming out to be 1 by 100. So from this, we can conclude that our rights are comparatively less than reads. We have more reads than rights. This can be one of the points that I would like to consider when we are talking about data storage. Now, okay. coming to uh, the upload videos, uh, the functional requirements itself, right? So I would like to uh, get to them one by one. For upload videos, uh, let's say, uh, first, uh, you know what I will try to do? I will try to design a monolith first, okay? And then from there on, I'll try to break it. Okay. Okay. So let's say that there is a service. Uh, let's call it TikTok 2, okay? And this service actually exposes, is actually uh, upload API. Okay. Upload API is going to take some user data, okay. uh, like user ID and user login, etc. Some metadata about the video and the actual video file. And one clarifying question I have here is that we would only allow uh, videos of length uh, 60 seconds, right? Or do we want to allow um, uh, larger videos as well? So what we want to do ideally is... Uh allow videos only of seven seconds yeah in case there is a special use case then we'll look at it later but more than seven okay. seconds does not make sense yeah. no, at the moment yeah okay okay makes sense makes sense so this will be the upload api right this will uh, this is going to take the videos and then after once the user or the creator uploads the videos what's going to happen is we are going to have some kind of storage for videos so i will just write uh, video storage here uh, now coming to the choice of storage. So uh, there are two kind of actually there are there is uh, three kind of data, three different kind of data that we have to store. One is uh, user data. So I will again since I'm going to use different DBs, I will just uh, try to separate it out. So I have to store uh, user data, video metadata. Okay, so uh, uh, these are the three kind of three different kind of data that we have to store. So I'll come back to uh, storing user data and video metadata. But first priority I'm going to give to store video data. Now we know that video data has to be stored uh, in uh, in a storage from where reads are easily accessible. Okay, reads are easily possible. And also there is going to be a lot of load on this video data because one would, video would be consumed by millions of people or at least uh, hundreds or thousands of people on an average, right? So uh, uh, since I have worked on systems like this before, uh, my choice would be to use something uh, of kind Amazon S3 in order okay. to store uh, this kind, in order to store these kind of files like video files. And for video metadata, I would go with a key value storage or maybe a columnar storage like Mongo or maybe uh, like any any other key value storage. I can use Redis also, but I, I don't see Redis would be useful here be, uh, because uh, it's better if we have only key value storage. In case of metadata, we would have many things. We would have thumbnail file and we would have other other uh, data about video like the, the user when it was created, the length, etc. So I would use uh, maybe a, a NoSQL database here like MongoDB. And for user data, I would go with MySQL 
because this is tried and tested. Uh, we need to store user data and we need to uh, fetch, uh, we need to fetch user data and user data would also be, uh, I think would be used if we build a recommendation system for different users. So there are going to be multiple services inside the system, which are going to access the user, which we will come to later. Now, coming back to our service, what this service is going to do, this service is going to store the video file into the S3 and the video metadata into this store and the user data into this store. This looks fairly simple when we do not have any scale, right? But since you said that there are going to be 100k creators and they will be uploading files, uh, obviously, if, if one creator uploads one file in a day, then also there will be 100,000 files every day. And if on an average one creator uploads five, then it will be 500,000 files every day. And since we want this to be uh, really fast and really uh, uh, accessible, like, as you said that the latency for upload of video should not be uh, very high. So I would maybe put uh, put this API uh, via a queue. Okay. So all the requests which are coming, they will be queued. The queuing is only done in order to just take uh, all the requests from the users because obviously we cannot rate limit users here. We cannot say, okay, you can upload only one file at a time or you can upload only 10 files at a time. It is up to the creator uh, how much files they're uploading. So we will queue all the requests and then send them for processing one by one. What the user is going to get in response of this upload API will be just a uh, acknowledgement, like some something like uh, I think uh, the code used is 202 that your request is accepted for the resource, and then we are going to create the resource. This is very simple view of how an upload service can look like. Okay. Uh, that, okay. Actually, that's a, that's a good point. Okay. Um... So I want to actually dig a little deeper around the choices you have made. Okay. What could yeah. be possible trade-offs and why are we actually going ahead with it? So you have S3 here. Could you tell me why you chose S3? Is it, I mean, why? Okay. Okay. So I have chosen S3 here because first, uh, it is a service provided by AWS. So it is quite reliable in terms of storing large files. In, in our case, it is going to be video files. And second, uh, serving data from S3 or uh, sharing data, like people reading from S3 buckets, uh, the, the other services reading from S3 buckets, again, again, can be reliable because we are relying on AWS's infrastructure in order to access the files. So one, we would save the uh, time and implementation of having our own store and then building it in a re reliable way because AWS has a service which is already doing that. However, if the company wants to build something in-house which has properties like S3, which is highly reliable, which can store data, we can do that as well. And second uh, reason what, why I wanted to do this is because uh, I was about to come to it, that since we have a lot of reads, we have to serve uh, a lot of uh, viewers while accessing these files, we can easily tie up S3 to a CDN and we can, uh, we can have different S3 buckets in different regions so that the latency of the videos which are, which are getting served to different viewers can be low. So let's say we have uh, the same video file is going to be replicated uh, again, uh, is going to be replicated in multiple regions. Let's say you are watching a video from Mumbai versus someone else watching the same video in US. For you, the S3 file that you would be able to access via CDN will be in a center or a region closer to you. Let's say it will be somewhere near Mumbai in India itself. Okay. Uh, while for someone else, if we are going to go through CDN approach, it is going to be closer to them, physically closer to them, because network latency does play a role. If we, let's say, if we save all the files in one region, uh, in one physical uh, hardware machine in US, there are multiple downsides to it. One, it becomes the single point of failure. We do not have any replication. If that goes down, the whole system goes down. Second, right. Uh, okay. The latency is huge. Uh, somebody accessing the same video from US might uh, uh, experience low latency, but someone accessing from uh, it from India might experience a lot of latency because of the actual physical distance. So using a combination of S3 plus CDN to serve uh, files like images and videos is actually a good approach to have low latency as well as to have to distribute the service basically. So if the if the S3 bucket or something goes wrong in the AWS region in US, it will not impact the users. Uh, anywhere else. It will only impact users in US. So those are the reasons that I would like to go with this S3 and CDN approach for serving the videos. Okay, so that's that's great. You have uh, you have given availability and and performance also or low latency as, as one of the reasons why you have chosen S3 because you can hook it up with a CDN 
okay uh, i i really like the points that you uh, explained in cdn but once you have mentioned cdn i think yeah that's uh, that actually takes care of a lot of the factors that are available with most cdn solutions okay okay um now okay so and, and s3 internally seems to us like a bit of a file storage right yeah yeah okay and basically we don't have mutability in these files but we are okay with it because videos are not going to be mutable to be edited yeah we we just have to serve the videos once video is uploaded and that's why i mean uh, the services like tiktok or youtube or netflix they they wouldn't allow you to edit the video once it's uploaded it's it's gone right so you uh, you don't you however if there is a use case to edit the video or to to change something then maybe this approach would have to be modified or we would have to look at a file storage where we can actually change the files got it okay perfect so now the other thing is you chose mysql for user data that is i think that is fine you are giving asset properties there you want uh, yeah. you want some sort of relational data so possibly storing it in mysql which is a relational database makes sense um, so that the, you might have profiles you might have country which is another table and based on that you actually create user uh, data uh, and if you want to denormalize you can denormalize okay now about video metadata why do you want to use another a key value store here uh, so is it a microservice that is going to be implementing this if so then why do you want it as a key value store why do you not want it as mysql so video metadata uh, first of all is not going to be uh, very uh, organized or relational as user data is going to be okay okay it will just be any video metadata will be just be attached to the video and the user itself and also metadata properties can change over time you might want to get rid of some properties you might want to add some properties let's say one video is deleted so the when was the video deleted when was the video uploaded what was the duration of that video what is the thumbnail of that video maybe you want to change the thumbnail of the video or maybe you want to change the description of the video all those things can be stored in a key value store because it will be flexible later on in order to change the schema of uh, the the whole metadata the video metadata that we are storing that is one reason because the we can have a flexible schema and second i want to use key value store because obviously uh, there is going uh, the the mysql uh, is also going to be fast for access but but uh, key value store is going to be even faster for access because it just with one key we would be able to access this metadata faster and i am assuming so let's say we build a recommendation engine right and recommendation engine wants to fetch the video link only not the whole video which we will be storing in video metadata so recommendation engine is going to access uh, the video metadata uh, maybe uh, we want to list all the videos for a user the we want to keep user history like what video videos this user has has watched that for that also we are going to access video metadata store so there can be multiple services which have to access video metadata and it will be easier if we keep it in a key value store again to horizontally scale it got it got it okay so uh that's that's good so basically your uh, schema is flexible okay i i understand that point and also you're saying that the number of reads are tremendous compared to writes possibly because of, and you don't have joins so you're going for a key yeah, value I store because you can scale also easily okay okay so the, uh, okay so now we have a good understanding of why each of these uh storage solutions have been used okay now another thing when you went to tiktok uh, 2 I, i think this is the ingest engine uh yeah yeah so i started it as a monolith but since now we are discussing s3 so actually there are going to be two different services one is going to be an ingest service or we can call it onboarding service or upload service which is going to take care of only uploading the videos and okay. other service uh, like the the we can call it video serving service or video streaming service which is going to take care of whenever a user logs in wants to see the video that service is actually going to find out where the user is residing located in what are the preferences of the user and then going to fetch videos from s3 so there is uh, let me just draw that service as well uh, now coming back to the videos itself uh, uh, I, so this is a question would you we want to store uh, different formats of the video like or you would want to just store the format of the video that the user has uploaded or you want to convert it into various formats okay so i do want to convert it into various formats uh, and resolutions because some formats may not be possible on a mac phone uh, on an iphone rather and uh, mm -hmm. some formats will be possible on a windows phone windows phone nobody mm -hmm. uses but android okay uh, 
the other thing is resolutions so some phones are high end uh, and some phones may not be able to support that kind of resolution so yes i'm looking for multiple formats and resolutions yeah. so so that way i uh, so i am thinking that uh, uh, for, we need different formats we need different resolutions and also i think uh, so that way let's say somebody has uploaded one video and let's say we support uh, 200 kinds of devices and four formats so that means we have 800 files for one video and let's say on top of that we support three formats so we have approximately 2400 files for one video uh, uh, i just want to give an idea like how much storage we are going to have just for one video so this is coming up quite often what's happening is that we are we are starting to have feelings like is this scalable enough is our architecture scalable enough so let's take it step by step let's pick up the point where we are actually scared at the moment you are worried about storage right right Okay, so I'll give you some numbers. Let's see if we can scale this architecture accordingly. So uh, we have one lakh uploaders, and also sporadic uploaders. Like sometimes people like uh, I, I am supposed to be a influencer, but let's say there's a person who doesn't upload many videos, um, and they also upload on some days. So in total, two lakh videos per day. Two lakh videos per day. Okay, so let's say there's two two hundred k videos. Two hundred k videos, and each video is about one MB, ten uh, seconds. Yeah. Two hundred k. Right, right. It will be one MB. So we have a storage of two hundred GB. Yeah. This this is uh, I think uh, yeah two hundred GB. Okay. Let's say we have a very efficient uh, you know video passing algorithm. Yeah, two hundred GB. Okay. But but this will be true only if you are storing one uh, the same video file. However, if you are going to store say multiple formats, so uh, suppose we uh, uh, support four formats, then we have to uh, store four files, which makes this a storage four times. Or maybe if we, we can roughly say two times because some files will be smaller uh, than the other files. So that that way it makes it around six hundred GB. Yes. Right. And now. Uh, for resolution as well like if you are going to uh, save in different uh, resolutions even that will increase the number of files so in uh, different formats okay let's put it at 2x approximately uh, i would possibly put it at maybe 3x but 2x is totally fine yeah yeah no no i, I was also thinking uh, that if it should be 3 so yeah i calculated 3 in my head so 600 gb oh yeah uh, of course it's come out fine <laughs> yeah. then uh, the other thing is if you take different formats like um, each video progressively keeps re reducing by half in size as you reduce the resolution so yeah. in general 2x of that is fine so i, I would say 1.2 tb is what we are 1.2 tb yeah so we have to store 1.2 tb uh, per day per day okay yeah. okay um so 1.2 tb uh, in terms of time okay in terms of storage this seems fine it's like yeah it seems fine uh in terms of time of up upload that is something different that we have to uh, look into in terms of how much how much time will it take to transfer this data from one place to another which is i think again fine it's basically dependent on the bandwidth and the network uh, 1.2 tb per day is not going to be a real issue for a large scale distributed system which has dedicated bandwidth right right and it also depends on on the aws cost and plans so this might be costly if we have bigger machines Yes, it might be uh, costly if you are using AWS. Uh, TikTok may be using AWS, or it might have its own dedicated infrastructure. Right. Just just to uh, take care of the cost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if your scale is very high, then it starts making sense to invest in not just software engineering, but also in you can go for hardware. You can buy your own data center. Our assumption in this case is if you are making that much data, then you are making that much money also. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Now I would like to see how is this ingest engine working. This is something which looks a little exciting. So I think uh, how this has to work is as soon as a video comes in. So I I already uh, said that uh, it has to go through a queue. So let's say that as soon as a video comes in, it has to uh, maybe go through a workflow or a pipeline where uh, multiple things would be happening. So let's say you want to. Um, verify or categorize that video into particular category or you want to first put a validation check if it is longer than 60 seconds then just reject it that would be be the first step maybe second step would be checking the uh, if the video is appropriate 
like some kind of filters on that video and third step would be to converting that video into multiple formats so from there i would say that a, a parallel uh, pro, pro, a parallel distributed approach would come into the picture like one file has to be converted into four different formats so it will be done in parallel by dividing the file into different chunks oh that's good that's good so basically you are parallelizing because you want to make this yeah. highly performant okay like we cannot wait to the file to be converted into one format then after that is finished then we will convert it into second format no instead of that we can take the current file divide it into different chunks and create a pipeline so first first the first step of the pipeline would be to divide the file into various chunks then the second step of the pipeline would be to convert those chunks into four different formats so there will be four parallel processes from there so four parallel processes will be uh, converting the file into different formats and then let's say the next step of the pipeline is to convert those chunks into different resolutions so from there onwards different uh, like those uh, different converted formats will be uh, will be modified into different resolutions and at the end of the pipeline all these chunks will be combined again and we will end up like what is started with one file we will end up with maybe uh, 8 or 16 copies of that file for storage and the next step would be uh, to upload these to s3 and also upload this to s3 in a way uh, looking at the location of the user so let's say if the if the user has uh, oh no no sorry no so uh, i i'd just like to uh, like if you can um, so if if i am getting the point correctly uh, and if i draw that out so what's happening is every one of these videos is being split into chunks chunks yeah okay so if you have a let's say one uh, 10 second video yeah. you want to split it into further chunks or do you want to take the whole chunk uh no so let's say that the uh, our chunk size is let's say 10 second okay in okay. that case that video will be one chunk but if the video is 30 seconds then this file will be divided into three chunks okay okay so you uh, splitting it into chunks might be useful in our case if it is 10 seconds long or if it is short then we can just directly exactly exactly if it if it's just a 10 second video it, we wouldn't have any parallel processing it will just go through all the stages of pipeline directly and it will be converted into different formats and resolutions Awesome, awesome. So that's that's what uh, we can do. And then you're you're saying that there's multiple formats and multiple resolutions. So if I have a, a 1080p phone, there is one for 720p. One of these rows, one of these rows is 480, uh, and yeah. then okay, the columns are like different. So there is one for Windows, one for Mac. I I don't know the exact uh, formats yeah. that we have inside this. You can possibly break them into multiple formats. Usually, these guys have their own proprietary formats. Like Netflix has its own. I am not sure if TikTok has its own. Tomorrow, if you want to support one more format, we just have to add one more step in the pipeline. So that would make the system scalable. Perfect. That's actually a very good point. Yeah. So you just need to add one one more uh, format here and one more resolution here. So if uh, somebody invents a new phone, you are not worried because you are taking each of these tasks individually and pushing them into like you said a worker yeah okay so multiple machines are working on this at the same time okay okay so this guy picks up this task this guy picks up this task and so on okay okay i i get this this part of the architecture this is a uh, a common and very useful pattern that you have used for video processing so i'm understanding that you are uh, reasonably well versed with video processing Yeah. Even 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 if we don't have videos, let's say we have large text files. Okay, and those are of size. Uh, let's say that we have text files of 10 MB, right? And we have to upload them. Even those files, we have to cut it into different batches and then store and then do some processing on them. Even okay. doing like uploading them in one shot and then keeping the user waiting for uh, up it uploading that is not a good uh, practice to follow, right? So anyway, we have to do this background processing. So oh, that's great. So in general, Yogita, what I'm understanding here is that whenever you need to do heavy processing, which is something that we can have with some latency, you go for an architecture which ingests, pushes into a uh, into a queue of tasks. These are effectively events, uh, mm -hmm. and then these events are being subscribed to by these workers effectively again, uh, who uh, these events are actually being uh, mapped onto different. they are they are actually been expanded into a format cross resolution matrix and each of these individual tasks are then being sent to workers who are subscribers okay that makes a lot of sense so heavy lifting sort of tasks i, I now i'm convinced that you can easily uh, scale this architecture for uh, for video processing okay so that part is done video storage you have explained
uh, and I would just like to point out that uh, we uh, th doing this way, we first uh, performance of upload is uh, like we have low SLA because we are doing parallel processing. So the time would be reduced because of the chunking and parallel processing. And second, uh, it's eventual consistency. So it's not like that as soon as the video uploads, it has to be available to all the users or viewers. It can take some time, like a minute or less than a minute to get uploaded uh, because we have all this in background processing. So it's it's not real time, actually. Uh, and obviously, after this, it will take time for, for dif uh, to go into different S3 buckets and replication and replication across different machines and regions. So I just want to point out that th there comes into the picture the eventual consistency property that I have written in the non-functional requirements earlier. Right, right. So, uh, but one of the things that is happening also uh, when you're uploading a TikTok video is that uh, it's a short video. So the amount of time required for doing all of this may be short. Um, yeah. One interesting thing that would have happened if you were uploading a YouTube video is that you would have split it into chunks. That was a very good idea. Now, how are you going to actually transport this video to the users? So let's say now here, uh, when we are here in this part, when the video is ready after chunking, now the next part is to upload the video to our storage, right? Yeah. So uploading the video to storage would uh, have multiple parts. First, uh, we would have replication of videos. Like we will not have single copy of the video. Second, we have to upload multiple files of the videos, right? So one video will have different files according to the uh, device and uh, resolution and format that we have just discussed. Also, uh, we have to upload uh, according to the region, right? So let's say the one file would be available in all the regions. It will be replicated across all the regions. Let's say we have four regions, uh, uh, depending on the demographics of the users. So uh, first of all, one file will go into all four regions and we have to uh, save 16 or 32 files like this, depending on our formats and resolutions. And also we might have to replicate these files. Now, why I'm talking about S3 and CDN and replication here, because our system, as we mentioned earlier, that it has to be fault tolerant. So if the one file is not accessible, in one region that doesn't mean that it is not accessible in another region so s3 plus cdn is going to take care of that secondly if one of the region machine goes down uh, and since we have replicas the request will be redirected to another node so that we have uh, uh, we still have the file stored in another node if one node goes down so that will again uh, help us in achieving high availability as well as fault tolerance now, coming back to how we are going to actually serve the video, there has to be a service which I have written here, like video serving service. Now, see what the service has to do. First, it has to locate where the user is and then uh, uh, re redirect that request to the nearest availability zone. Second, it also has to take into consideration the network bandwidth of the user, the, the device uh, of the user, the format that user can be supported with and on top of that, some recommendation. But let's say we are only talking about particular video now. So this video serving service have to take all of that into consideration before downloading a video from any of this, uh, any of the storages or, or via CDN. Also, uh, there is going to be caching at CDN level. So it's not like if one user has seen the video once, again, it will come, again, it will be up, uh, like uh, preloaded into the cache. It will already be available into the CDN cache. So that's how we are going to give low latency while distributing the video. But someone who is designing the service or whenever like I myself, when I have to develop this service, these are the points I'm going to keep in mind that how I'm going to optimize uh, requesting the best quality video and uh, give the best user experience. Now, this is a strange beast. Uh, CDN is something that we will be building or is it a already provided solution or do you want some sort of a hybrid solution? Yeah, so it depends. Like, for example, the famous CDN that I know is Akamai. And uh, uh, for Netflix, I think there is something known as Open Connect, uh, which is used. Like, I think it's it's their own uh, CDN. So it depends. Like, if the company uh, or, or the whoever is design building the system, if they have enough uh, resources and money to pay to uh, an outsourced CDN, it is fine but again if we outsource this uh, to someone else's cdn we, they, there will be slas like let's say we want 99.99 percent availability but they are providing only 99.98 and we are spending a lot of money then that is a big decision to make whether we want to build our own and also we have to see the time how much time it will take for us to build our own solution but let's say if we are a company like netflix it is worth investing time and effort and resources into building our own uh, cdn so that we can uh, 
make it flexible according to our requirements and also the control and the reliability everything uh, is in our control so that would be a decision to make while choosing a, a cdm yeah no let's take interview ready for example right let's say it has videos that it wants yeah. to uh, it, that it wants to share uh, i can't afford a cdn cluster to be built so cdn actually is all around the world there is india there is us there is china there is hundreds of cdns uh, around the world and these solutions are not easy you can't go around to different countries and you know they have different regu- regulations and then you need a algorithm to also broadcast your uh, content across this so you need some sort of protocol to actually do that but yeah i i totally agree with you cdn is basically like you go around the globe and then you have multiple spots where your video is being stored so that things are faster nearby users can use this okay so i i, I think i'll go uh, with the with the solution that you have which is let's go and take akamai is help or uh, some some other cdn solution help so yogita there's two things that i want to know uh, apart from this yeah. because now i'm convinced that our system is scalable end to end okay and we also have some good engineering practices that we have used we have made it as fault tolerant as possible by uh, replication we have also used relevant databases to store relevant type of data okay we have a worker pipeline Every, everything seems fine okay we have a cdn also however <laughs> they are they, how will you what, like what kind of protocol will you use to actually send this video down to the devices and what kind of protocol will you actually use to ingest this video from the device to the ingest engine like what, what endpoint will you uh, give here yeah for the upload will you use ftp yeah will will you use http will you use ftp will you use what kind of okay Uh, this uh, yeah this is a good question uh, i think if i have to use http i would use https but uh, there can be uh, upsides of using file transfer protocol as well which okay. um, i have not used before but i can look up and uh, see the difference uh, between https and ftp and then make a call okay in an interview <laughs> <laughs> in the interview i would i would uh, since i have used https before i would like to uh, go with that okay okay so yeah yeah because this is a this is a file like uh, this this file is not being recorded live we are going for https i, I think it should be fine what we are doing effectively is just sending a large chunk of data so we can break it into chunks also yeah and send it across to the ingest engine so it's like basically requests which have been fragmented and packets are being sent one by one so you're are you going to send this over um, okay if you're using https then i mean you're basically using tcp so you have reliable transport and you have it ordered also yeah. so things should be fine yeah. okay let's say a user here visits my profile and says that give me all the recent tiktok videos of gorav so how will the the request flow end to end like how will you get this video to this user to uh, so uh, like uh, okay. okay okay so right so so the pers- some user is trying to view your profile and wants to access all the videos right yes yes yeah okay so so that request will come to the video serving service but that will not directly go to all the videos first it will check uh, for which user you are the the viewer is requesting the videos for that user the request is going to go to the user uh, database as well as video metadata database and the mapping where we will have okay for this users uh, like this key value store is going to have the user id we will query on that uh, yeah all the video titles and thumbnails will be visible to the user on the first go so the list will be returned which will have the video title and video metadata uh, for for you uh, like for for one creator that will be written to the user and then once user clicks on that video then the whole flow will again go through cdn it and in this case no uh, processing no pre processing or anything is required just the video id will be enough to play that video from cdn so whenever we see something on uh, youtube or tiktok i don't think that all the videos are already Are downloaded on the on the user's device, or they start streaming on the user's device. Only once you click on it, the streaming starts. Basically, you're sending a list of videos back to the user, and the user can then yeah. pull out this data. Okay. 
from the CDN. Uh, you are sending a bunch of links which it is downloading from the CDN. Okay, okay. Hmm. And uh, we are not focusing too much on the caching of these videos or the caching of the metadata I think is uh, rather obvious. What's happening is that you are taking all the relevant videos mm -hmm. right now, hot videos, and then you store it as like, for this user, yeah, yeah. what so are the links? What we, yeah. what we can also do is like, we can have, uh, let's say, if we have a service that takes care of the hot videos or the videos which are trending, right? So the metadata for those videos and highly uh, shared videos can be stored uh, in caching. So we don't even have to query the actual key value store. We can just directly pick it from cache. Okay, okay, and we are assuming that the CDN uh, is handling this, like the caching of videos. So, uh, so CDN can, can yeah, CDN can handle the caching of actual video. Right, yeah, it will. Uh, it's a service that they are providing us. Uh, we have, yeah, if we had been building it ourselves, then we would need to take care of. Oh my God, how am I going to tell this CDN that this video is getting really popular? You can probably even. Um, I, I'm not sure if. Uh, Akamai or any known solutions provide APIs where you can ask it to kick things out of cache and put things in cache. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case, but yeah, in general, I think uh, this is fine. We, we have given that responsibility to them. All right, Yogita, uh, do you have any questions for me before <laughs> HR contacts you? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, definitely, definitely. I mean, in a real interview, I might not ask for feedback until I hear the final verdict. But in this case, since we are trying to have a mock interview, I would uh, like to have some feedback. Right, right. No, uh, that's totally true. Uh, how about, so basically when we look at this design, things seem like uh, we have picked up patterns which are often used, like good engineering practices, and we have implemented them in the right places. Uh, you spoke about availability, that is good. You spoke about the the pipeline that you're using. Basically, what you have done is you have decoupled ingestion rate from processing rate. So when you use a pipeline like that, you give the workers enough time to process videos at their own pace. Right? You don't need to process videos immediately, so to speak. I, I know I said low latency there, but in the worst case, if you're getting flooded with videos, let's say it's Christmas or New Year's or Diwali, everyone sending you videos, you want some sort of decoupling. You want the, in, the, you want the queue to get larger if required, but you don't want the systems to collapse. Okay, that was really nice to use that uh, engineering principle. Another thing that you have used is high availability, which means multiple zones replication. You use the CDN, which makes a lot of sense because uh, you need to distribute this data all around the globe. So these are great engineering practices and I think you use them fabulously throughout the video. One place I would have liked to see uh, you get to quickly would have been cost estimation because in quite a few places I was seeing that you were a little uh, hesitant to say whether this is, you know, this is good enough or not. Or uh, th there were some assumptions that we were making in between that maybe this is good, maybe this is not so good. Uh, had we done the cost estimation very early in the video, like, okay, we need to store these many videos. This is the amount of processing time might have uh, might have you know yeah. made it a more smooth flow uh, finally i i don't know if this is true but i felt like you were a little hesitant getting into the network protocols that we are going to be using for video upload and download so yeah. that that could be some place yeah. where yeah. as an interviewer i'm going to probably dig deeper because i'll see hesitancy so i want to put you in a spot um but in a real, uh, I mean, in, in, in this interview, it's towards the end of the interview. So I'm at 45 minutes and that's why I don't get time. That was really good from your side because you have explained the whole architecture and then I'm like, okay, fine. Yeah, this, this is good enough. But uh, if you had gone for that in the start, then I would have probably digged a lot deeper and, and uh, it would have still been yeah. totally fine, but it, it would have been slightly, the first impression is a bit more important. So that's some place that you can probably look into a little more. Right, right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I got sort of lucky that we came to uh, the discussion of the network protocols part uh, towards the end, because uh, truly, like, as I said, uh, I mean, it would not be nice to not have this knowledge, but it is better that I say that I have not worked on it rather than try to guesstimate something, right? So, since I have only worked with HTTPS, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and i haven't had uh, i have i don't have like practical hands on knowledge of different protocols so that's why uh, you must have seen the hesitancy uh, to uh, talk about it but what i can do as a candidate is i can take this feedback and go back and study about this and learn about this and be ready for the next interview yeah absolutely that's that's perfect in an interview the intent is not to get the right system it's to put you in a spot or to actually check how much knowledge do you have in different sectors so i think this is great this is awesome if you want to get more ready for the interviews then head over to interviewready.in